Hi, everyone. My name is Jeff Wu, Regional Head of Brand, Social Media, and Customer Communications. Today, I'm delighted to host this broadcast along with today's speakers, Norlin Ahmad Lim, who is the head of Asia to Latin America and Oceania markets, and Marcus Ong, our head of APAC Air. I'd like to say a big welcome to all of you taking your time to join us. Today's broadcast will cover two primary topics. The first being an overview of ocean freight service presented by Norlin. This will provide an overview of how pandemic and the conflict in Europe has impacted the supply chain industry and how we expect things to trend over in the coming months. Followed by Marcus Un, who will have touched upon on air freight demands, capacity and rates trending. Mr. Un will also present our estimation of performance for the next year. Given the current climate and challenges that supply chain confronts, I hope you will all find the information shared today brings more visibilities and value to your business. Before we get started, I'd like to inform you about Zooms, which is the system that you're using right now, whose interpretation function will give you the access to a Chinese audio track. You can find this function on the interpretation icon on Zoom's toolbar. We've also prepared some giveaways for our audience. Kindly be noted during the broadcast, we'll be hosting a quiz related to the content being shared. Simply complete the questions that appear on your system, which will qualify you for a lucky draw. We will also be hosting a post-session survey at the end, so make sure to stay with us and win some prizes. If you have any questions for our speakers, please do type in, in your question in your chat box, and we aim to reply you during the session. Otherwise, your questions will be addressed within two days after the broadcast. Okay, let's get started. Let me pass over the microphone to Norlin first. Over to you, Norlin. Thank you, Jeff. Hello, everyone. My name is Norlin, and I'm head of Asia to Latin America and Oceania markets. Customers are continuing to face a raft of challenges as the Russia-Ukraine conflict weighs on the longer-term outlook for the global economy. This is also a bit concern that inflation and higher energy prices will lead to lower consumer demand, damaging international trade. The short term, however, is more positive. Cargo volumes through Shanghai are returning to pre-lockdown levels, and demand from U.S. customers is pulling forward the peak shipping season on North American trade. Musk continues to do its best to mitigate the impact of ongoing port congestion with the deployment of extra loaders where possible, the rescheduling of services, and in New Zealand, the launch of our MERS Coastal Connect service to improve port connectivity. In terms of our ocean freight service, as we enter the summer peak for most of the APEC region export trades, it is positive to see that factory production is picking up and the demand is rebounding. However, the high inflation rate and rising unemployment ratio in North America and Europe cast a high level of uncertainty towards the global trade and the demand situation out of the region. Now, let's have a deep dive into each of the markets. For North Europe, ongoing strikes and port congestion in Rotterdam, Bremerhaven, Hamburg, and Antwerp remains to be a major pain point for the industry, creating major disruptions to customers' supply chain. Rest assured, our teams are working around the clock to keep your supply chains moving as seamlessly as possible and adapt as necessary to support your, your global logistics needs. For the latest information on reports, please refer to our online update page shown in the chat box. Moving on to the Pacific. The export volume for August is expected to show an uptrend. North American port situations, however, are still deteriorating, and as a result, the capacity loss is expected to continue due to a base sailing caused by port congestion. U.S. East Coast port congestions deviate from port to port. Overall waiting time is up to three days, but situation in Savannah and Houston being a lot worse, with waiting time hovering around 10 to 15 days. On the U.S. West Coast, similar congestion experience in Los Angeles and Long Beach, with waiting time at 15 days. For the Pacific Northwest, Vancouver waiting times has reduced to seven days. However, it doesn't mean the congestion has improved. 
flat density increased to 113%, and rail dwell time increased to a minimum of 10 days. Train throughput waiting time was reduced to five days, but with 122% yard density, this means there is a severe challenge for the port to store any more cargo, and terminal still requires 100% match rate. Congestion on the rail network also has worsened, with rail dwell increasing from five to 12 days. Due to the above critical Pacific Northwest congestion, we are seeing missed savings and scheduled delay challenges for TP1 and TP9. Please expect the delays in shipments as the extreme terminal conditions doesn't allow us to send more loaders to Vancouver to mitigate the capacity loss. At MERSC, we are working on optimizing the network setup and berth windows to bring customers a better shipping experience. To mitigate the capacity loss on the Pacific Northwest network, we are reviewing adding Prince Rupert or Surrey on TP7. Please regularly visit MERSC.com for the latest updates. Meanwhile, as we cannot expect the North American port situation to be improved over the following months, we are seeing more overflow in the network due to strong demand and missed savings. We kindly suggest that our customers prepare more lead time between desired cargo arrival and actual departure time. And moving down the continent for Latin America. Demand into West Coast or South America is strong for August and must continues to provide best in class schedule reliability on our AC network. Based on June's report of C-Intel, the AC network schedule reliability is 93% compared to the industry average of 44. Demand into East Coast of America is also continue to be very strong, especially into Brazil. Capacity on the network is tight, and we encourage customers to plan their supply chain in advance, as there might be potential delays in cargo loading out of Asia. Circling back from across the globe for an update a little closer to us, we have a few exciting changes on the Oceania network to serve our customers better. The introduction of a dedicated New Zealand coastal service, the MERS Coastal Connect, is an exciting new project that will grow this segment of the market. MERS continues to invest in restoring the New Zealand network reliability while continuing to offer superior port coverage to future proof New Zealand domestic and international cargo connections. The launch of the MERS Coastal Connect will bring much needed schedule reliance, flexibility, and superior coverage on the New Zealand supply chain. It marks an important milestone in our 25 years of operation in the country as we continue to invest in the New Zealand market to offer reliable connections, both for domestic and international cargo. In addition to the launch of MERS Coastal Connect, we are also pleased to have our mainliner system, the South and Star, we introduced the port of Brisbane on a rotation after Southeast Asia ports. This will give additional capacity from Southeast Asia into the east coast of Australia. The Southern SAR service will also make ad hoc inducement calls in the port of Fremantle before departing Oceania region. This is to help provide additional capacity for our customers for their exporting requirements. Currently, there are two calls in the Fremantle plan for each of the months of August and September. Last but not least, I'd like to share more on our eco delivery service. With the new EU IMO regulations on EU Emissions Trading System, or ETS, upcoming in 2023, carbon pricing for cargo entering Europe will gradually increase over the next four years. Our products, such as MERS Eco Delivery, will allow your cargo to do a green switch without being penalized for carbon emissions. Our biofuel value added service, MERS Eco Delivery, has a strong take up rate and is supporting 45 Asia based customers with over 100,000 FFE for 2022. This volume has doubled within the last five months and looking to project higher by the end of the year. This product can be added to any existing contract and works on any of MERS extensive trade things. For more information, please refer to the link in the chat box. We can support you in partnerships with Global Logistics Emissions Council, Clean Cargo, and many other organizations for carbon methodology, sustainability solutions in ocean and land site, visibility of CO2 emissions. We would like to share the collaboration with many of these companies that have come forward with joint press releases with us on our biofuel solution and how it has supported them in their decarbonization goals. If you are interested to see some highlights from customer, please go to the links in the chat box 
where you can find content regarding our partners such as Lenovo, UMAC, BZ, and OBE News. We are looking forward to partnering with more customers in such initiatives and are committed to developing more of these value-added products and services for your sustainability needs. That's all from my side. Thank you for listening. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you, Norlin, for sharing those valuable insights. And that concludes the first half of our sessions, which means it is the time for our exciting quiz. This quiz will cover some of the points you have heard in Norland's presentation. You should all be able to see this pop-up window on your screen right now. If you can't see it, you can manually open Zoom's poll function from the toolbar. We'll leave this pop-up window up for a few minutes to provide you with some time to complete the quiz. I'd also like to remind you that we will be running a post event survey, which provides you with another opportunity to win our prepared giveaways. All winners will be notified after this event through the email. Now that everyone has hopefully gotten their answers in, I'd like to leave our floor to our next speaker, bringing us more updates on Asia Pacific air freight. Mark Azum, please take it over. Thank you, Jeff. Good afternoon. I'm Marcus. I work for MERS as the head of Air Freight Asia PAC region based in Singapore. Today, I'm going to share some insights of our current Asia PAC Air Freight status of the industries. Generally speaking, for Greater China, volume has fallen in the month of July due to the impact of summer holidays. There are minimal impacts on air freight from the sporadic COVID 19 outbreak in China. Carriers have cancelled several flights to Europe and North America due to the low cargo demand. Air cargo rate because of that has also been fallen, making air cargo more attractive to customers. In Hong Kong, capacities has increased as airline reintroduced more flights after the government eased COVID-19 restrictions. However, fuel surcharge has increased from 1st July from Hong Kong dollars $5.10 per kg to Hong Kong dollars $6.10 per kg of course, on chargeable weights here. For Australia and New Zealand, as China slowly returns to pre-lockdown operational level, extra airline capacities has led air freight rates falling across all origin airports into Oceania. There is also a cargo backlog in Shanghai, which has lengthened the transit time between international airports. The trans tasmania market remains challenged for consumer as airline continue to hold off release of new capacities in the market itself. In terms of Japan, operators are coming under increased pressure to make domestic transportations for pharma products GDP compliance, following the influx of COVID-19 related vaccines into Japan, with the call for creations of quality certification system. So far, Japanese versions of the GDP guideline has yet to be legislated and are not enforceable. International logistics will continue to be disrupted due to the lack of space and restrictions of the cargo handling at the airport facilities. After all this overview, allow me to share with you some factors on the impact of the status of air freight industries, namely, as we all know, supply demand, fuel, and most importantly, the rate trending. Similarly to the world of economics, okay, in air freight industries, there are multiple macro and microeconomic explain. There is also no guarantee on the foreseeing and projections of market trending. Moreover, to add on, every industry, as we all know, for the past two years, we have been through that, through the unprecedented events of COVID-19 impact, and is still in a very volatile state. While it's heading on a stabilizing growing stage, as we currently know, as we our country is slowly you know, opening up here. However, we are still able to share with you historical trending for your judgment to the near future developments of every industries. First of all, regarding demand, air export demand has been seeing a reduction in volume incremental developments over the last one year. In May, it started to decrease year on year we are continuing seeing demand softening and the manufacturing PMI index is at the lowest since August 
to zero, which result in reductions of cargo flow likely to improve. Global inflation situations is also driving consumer confidence index to its lowest since 2009. Ukraine and Russian crisis still has prevalent effects on the demands, which is also driving fuel pricing, higher freight rates due to reroute cost and reduction in air freight capacities. Currently, softening on demand is likely to reverse as we, Asia, gear towards the ease of lockdown. The peak seasons will influence inventory refill. E-commerce contribution is likely increased in coming years, year end as well. Normalizations of ocean freight will be a major factors on demands of level of air freight. Some customers with high inventory level at destinations will convert their air freight to ocean if there's opportunity to do so. Secondly, let's look at into supply. Overall global cargo capacities is up approximately 18% in July 2022 versus last year. And year on and month on month improvement continues. However, the capacity is still affect compared to pre-COVID period. PEX belly capacity is down by nearly minus 19% in July 2022 as compared to pre-COVID level. Removal of Russian freighter operator RU in the market has brought airline freighter's capacities to the lowest since quarter three 2022 globally. Load factors is continue to elevate as compared to pre-COVID due to the imbalance of supply and demand. But it is softened since 2021 with the resuming of some of the PAX flight capacities. Summer travels has peaked as a result in overbooking of flights, which reflects in a surge in PAX flights or PAX demand in the world. Month on month capacity reduction still fluctuates due to the service disruption, flight cancellations, staff shortages in airport, as we heard over the news as well. Moreover, in terms of the newly delivered belly capacities in year 2021, it is the lowest total delivery since 2006 due to the order deferred caused by the pandemic. While the rest of the world belly capacity rebound plus 64% in the last 12 months by reinstating existing flight, belly capacities to and fro Asia pack only increased plus 17%. Europe to North Asia direct flight cargo capacity declined over the beginning of this year itself. Due to the flight cancellations, increase of flight time caused by rerouting of Russia, Ukraine airspace, and outbound Shanghai air cargo capacities has dropped in April to about minus 60 to 70 percent during the lockdown and recover to minus 9 percent below the pre lockdown level. Next, we will look into the fuel costs. It is well ever that you know, globally we are facing an increase of fuel costs from a direct impact to our daily life here, from the petrol costs that we use to the transportation costs or transportation delivery costs that we have here. One of the major traditional costs for an airline is the jet fuel price. In the month of June, jet fuel price has hit highest ever above having a US dollars $176 per barrel, which is unseen for. And for the past 10 years as well, we have never seen such things. Uncertainty continue to be affected by Ukraine-Russian situation. Productions decisions of OPEC plus, production forecast, current forecast likely to change. En Energy Information Administration, EIA, still estimates the oil price will average about $100 per barrel in the year 2023, which is next year. Oil inventory focused forecast to raise to the rest of 2022, but will remain unchanged in 2023, remain low. However, the high fuel cost components for airlines, this will have tremendous influence on their rates and their ability to scale as well to move forward. Last but not least, rate is also a vital factor. Global rates remain elevated at 120% higher in June 2022 as compared to 2019 baseline and plus 23% more than higher 
than 201 baseline. Global rate has shown a sign of softening through demand and capacity imbalance. It still continue on most routes as mentioned earlier on. Jet fuel price high. War risk surcharge still keep the rates higher than pre-COVID period. Potential rise in volume in coming months on Q4 2022 peak season. This can shift the rates higher again, especially outbound Asia pack where capacity likely to be crunched. Now the question is whether will Africa be seeing a new normalization market rate over the coming near future? It's between you and me to decide and guess and judged. All right. Thank you and back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, Marcus. I hope that everyone was able to take some information during those presentations, as I am sure that the information will be very valuable to you. We have now reached the end of the broadcast. If you would like to go into the draw pool to, to win some of our giveaways, Zoom will take you to a survey form after the broadcast where you can submit your feedback. We would love to hear what your thought about, about the content that was shared and how we can improve. The prize winners will receive an email after the event for more details. Also, don't forget to scan the QR code to follow up on our LinkedIn and access to our latest customer advisories. Thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a pleasure sharing this broadcast with you, and we hope to see you again in October. Thank you also to our fabulous speakers for sharing their knowledge. Thank you all, and have a great rest of the day.